Tonight, an attempt to possess one of us was made. It tried to get into our heads and dissect our soul. It terrified Corey so deeply that it forced him to leave immediately and seek safety. We do not know who or what it was, but we do know that it was powerful and evil. In addition, for the first time ever, we will be speaking with someone who has been possessed. We are a mile from the nearest road. We are literally in the middle of nowhere. I was possessed on this corridor. What? what? I was actually stood watching myself shout at the group to get out. I'm not happy about that, man. There's something down there that's not human. Oh, my God. His face was like transforming into like a werewolf. What was happening? It's like a dream. His eyes spun sideways. That was like that was not real. Welcome to the Overnight Channel, dedicated to finding proof of the paranormal. Tonight's investigation takes place at Woodchester Mansion. The Elemental. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Overnight Channel. Or if you're new here, welcome to the Overnight Channel, where we are dedicated to everything paranormal, unsolved, mysterious, mystical, supernatural, extraterrestrial. It doesn't matter what it is, we're here to learn more about it and try and find proof of it. We're currently in the UK, and this is one of the last stops in our series here. We've been here for a total of 10 nights. We have done a huge variety of locations. If you haven't seen any of those videos yet, they're there. Mm -hmm. But this is the most unique one on the trip so far. If you've ever seen Hill House or Bly Manor, mm -hmm. this is basically, in my opinion, where both of those shows got their inspiration from. So when you think of like old English hauntings and you think of like the headless horseman mm -hmm. and the tall man and the white like shadow figure lady and the children's spirits, there's documented stories of every single type here. Every stereotypical ghost haunting you can think of stemmed from here. The Patrick, Headless Horseman. Patrick Swayze is from here? I've got a reference, I'm not. To ghost reference. Uh, you haven't seen ghosts with Patrick he Swayze was, and Whoopi uh, Goldberg? What? Uh, wait, Whoopi Goldberg did a ghost movie? What? She won an Academy Award for, for it. A, what? Damn, yeah. I didn't. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, no, he hasn't. Yeah. So what, what's one famous line Whoopi Goldberg said in the movie? Hmm? Are you, are you go back in your phone? Oh in the my movie? god, that is not Whoopi Goldberg. She was, yes, she it was is. British? She was British in the movie? That's That was her character. Oh, yeah, what was Swayze's fa uh, like, famous line from the movie? Hello, I'm Obama. It's ditto. This house is 200 years old and actually has 200 years worth of paranormal stories. Not There's a good. huge chapel here. There's a morgue here as well. Why? There's why? a morgue here? Why does everywhere that has a chapel inside haunted? I always wondered if the chapel is built first or if they build the chapel because, because of the haunting. This is one place you have. I didn't know about this place. Ah. I know no history. I know nothing about it, so I'm walking into here blind. So for once we get to surprise Dan instead yep. of Dan oh, telling well, us everything. Well. Yep. <laughs> it's going to be a fun night. We have a historian who will be joining us for a little bit of time to tell us all of the paranormal stories and encounters that have happened here. And then we're also joining forces with a psychic medium for a little bit of time as well. Well, should we head inside? Yeah. Let's do it. There. Woodchester Mansion, with its Gothic Victorian architecture, lives down a dirt road far from other homes in the southern half of England. It has been touted as one of the most haunted buildings on earth and home to some of the scariest ghosts in the United Kingdom. In the 1870s, it was finally left abandoned and unfinished by its builders. From the exterior, it presents itself as an immaculate, massive home, boasting four floors, a stained glass chapel, and enough room to host events for hundreds of guests. But within is only exposed beams, flooring, plaster, and concrete slabs. The building that stands now is the second structure at this particular plot. In 1610, the original building was constructed, a hunting lodge. Over 100 years prior to a similar style hunting lodge, the Hellfire Club of Dublin. By the 1740s, the mansion we're stepping foot into tonight began its journey. There's a great deal of confusion as to why such an immaculate home was built in this location, given how much land surrounding it was owned by the original family. Instead of choosing a hilltop location, they placed it deep within a valley, down a long, difficult to travel road in a specific placement that barely receives any fresh air or sunlight. But maybe building a mansion that primarily lives isolated and in darkness while struggling to breathe is precisely what they wanted. 
As the many owners passed away, so did the motivation to finish a project no one could rather understand. It has fallen into more and more decay until local residents put together a restoration trust that now keeps it maintained and available for visitors. Yet as you can imagine, we are not here tonight to simply admire the stained glass and plaster. We're here for the stories of hauntings that have been told for century upon century. Tonight, we will hear one story in particular none of us were expecting nor had heard anything like it before. A first-hand story of possession, where he could recall every detail. He witnessed himself leave his own body, leaving all control over it behind as another voice left his mouth while he was suspended in darkness, waiting. We believe a similar attempt was made on Cory tonight, but by which of the spirit residents, we do not know. After all, what better home for the dead than a majestic mansion isolated in darkness for most hours of each day? Here are just some of the known hauntings of Woodchester Mansion. The phantom horseman seen traveling the mansion's road. The tall man the chapel, silently walking the property. An old woman, known for attacking female visitors by grabbing them in the dark. The ghost of a young girl, seen playing up and down the stairs. An elemental, supernatural entity or force thought to be physically manifested by occult means. Potentially a direct result from the satanic rituals that are rumored to have happened in the chapel. Beyond these mentioned, our guide tonight will introduce us to even more spirits, with stories only he could tell best, and apparently, some of them wanted to say hello, while others wanted to make us immediately leave. Please make sure to subscribe, as we have brand new investigations and locations every week. And if you hear or see anything during this video, please leave a comment and let us know. Hey everyone, before we jump into the rest of this video, I just wanna let you know that this is one of the more surreal and intense nights we've ever had. We had to call this investigation early. Someone on our team needed to leave. It was the first time we've ever had a situation where we all felt like the right thing to do was for all of us to leave. But with that being said, I need to stop in and thank our amazing sponsor for this episode, Established Titles. Now, if you don't know, there's a custom in Scotland that allows you to be called a lord or lady if you own land there. So you can rightfully change your name on plane tickets and credit cards and other things like that to literally say Lord Elton Caste. And with established titles, you can buy as little as one square foot of land to get this honor. And what will happen is they will send you your own certificate that proves that you can now be called a lord or lady with your private piece of land on an estate in Scotland. It's an official crest and gives you your specific plot number so you can look up the property that you now own. And if you're watching this video right now and you're like, I need a last minute gift, well, there's still time because you can get the digital version. So it makes an amazing gift for a friend, family member, even a couple, you can get adjoining plots of land just side by side. Another cool thing they're doing is with every purchase, they plant a tree. They're supporting global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. Their primary goal is to find a unique way to help preserve all of these woodlands and raise money for these charities all around the globe. So go ahead and do yourself a favor, my lords and ladies, and head over to establishedtitles.com slash overnight and use code OVERNIGHT to get an additional 10% off their already existing holiday sale. It is just worth it. I mean, I'm literally now, I'm going to change all of my credit cards and my plane tickets now. Lord Elton Castet, that's, that's, that's me now. But regardless, thank you all so much for your support. Thank you to Established Titles for sponsoring this episode. And enjoy this video. It is, it's, it's, enjoy. Oh, oh my god. It's got that Assassin's Creed vibe. Doesn't it? Yeah. Hi guys, yeah. how are you? What's going on? Yeah. Elton. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Right. Matt. Nice to meet Very you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Dan. Nice to meet you, Dan. Hey, Corey. Nice to meet you, Corey. Nice to meet you. You've come to the right place to be looking for ghosts. So we are uh, lots of stories. Yeah. Lots of sightings. I mean, if we step on through into this kitchen area, this is where the the ghost of a, of a young lady called Moira has 
She hasn't been seen, but she's definitely been heard. Just shy of 20 years I've been looking after this building um, for paranormal groups from all over the world so they could come and visit to see what they can find. Wow. This, this building certainly can kick off. You will hear the slightest sound and you'll get a pinpoint. Just mm -hmm. go for it and see what you find. That's cool. That's perfect. This is actually the oldest part of the mansion. Uh, the floor we're walking on is the original floor from Spring Park's kitchen. So if you believe in stone tape theory, these stones have been hanged on the corner floor since around 1715, so wow. very, very old. Uh, a guy has periodically been seen staring through that doorway. He won't come in to the kitchen, and he just stands there. So a very poor bone of character, quite, quite a tall character. Um, he, he won't enter, he doesn't interact. But that doorway there, and there's something else to watch out for within this area. I witnessed one night a truck driver, one of these, I'm not scared of anything sort of guys. Yeah, I know the type. Straight <coughs> to his knees in tears. I know the type. Yeah, you got one of those, yeah. <laughs> We've all been around yeah. Yeah. truck drivers, yeah. He was on his knees in tears in his room. And uh, we took him back in the safe room and his hand, we gave him a hot drink, his hand was like this. He could not explain, he said it was just a feeling. Whether it came from this guy over here, but he said this dark feeling came over him, oppressed him, and he just was so quiet. So. There is a story to tell here, this, this corridor. I was down here one night with a paranormal group, it wasn't my event. Uh, that night I was sat alone in the drawing room. There was a group of about 15 people stood at this end of the corridor. They had EVP recorders set all down. Oh wow. I heard an almighty scream and I thought something's kicked off and then it was just silent for half an hour. Both of your faces were just... Then the group leader <laughs> came into the drawing room and said did you just hear that? I said yeah where, where is everybody? He said they're all outside. They'd all legged it because the girl at the front, staring down this corridor, had this chap running at her, arms out, and he made a noise similar to, Aah! What? She screamed, um, then mass hysteria set in. The whole group just panicked, and legged out the building. That's only part of the story. The EVP recorders down the corridor picked up this guy. The growl? And the growl. And so I heard the aftermath, but I also later on that evening heard the, heard the roar of the guy. All of our mouths are wide open right now. <laughs> That's insane. So this, this is the sort of activity when it kicks off, you, you can experience uh, in Winchester Mansion. Can I just say how weird it is that we haven't been able to move 10 feet in this building without you having another story. <laughs> That's incredible. So I just stood outside of the mansion office. Uh, the first director here when I started did not believe in ghosts. On his last day, he walked up these stairs to hand his keys in and stood in that doorway there was a little boy just staring at him. Then he just vanished in front of his eyes. So he left his position of Woodchester Mansion with that. Perhaps there is something in, in there because he, he had witnessed a little boy stuff. So that wasn't what made him quit. He was already quitting. He was already quitting. And the mansion gave him a farewell gift. They had a farewell gift to the little he boy. He just didn't, I don't want. tossed the keys in the room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know. It was it's pretty cool for the, your last day and then they showed yeah. themselves to you. He's a believer now. Well, he should be. Yeah. One of the energies in Woodchester Mansion, we believe, is one of the builders called James, who fell to his death. We don't know whether he was pushed or whether it was an accident, but he fell to his death. I've been investigating the paranormal, like I say, for 20 years. I'm a skeptic, but I've experienced things that I can't explain. The weirdest thing that happened to me, I was possessed on this corridor. What? what? by James. I was actually stood watching myself shout at the group who were up investigating to get out. But the voice coming out of my mouth wasn't mine. And it was only when one of the team at the other end started shouting back at me, I stopped watching myself, looked at him, and then all of a sudden I was back in my body. I just felt electric, static, whatever you want to call it. 
and I said, right, everybody out. So we all went back down the stairs into the drawing room. They looked at my face. I was white. I was white with fear. I still haven't been able to explain it. I feel uncomfortable telling the story. It was videoed. The video didn't catch me watching myself. There's not two of me in the video. Um, but the voice. I went home after watching the video back, a day or so later, played it to my wife. She said, who's that shouting? I said, well, that's me. She said, but that's not your voice. Why? I know. That, that scared me rigid. I don't know whether that's given me some subconscious fear, which makes me feel more uncomfortable up here. Mm. But ladies in particular, uh, if they've got brown hair, will have their hair pulled. I've witnessed a girl um, overcome with the, such a feeling of sadness that she's lost a baby. She's become hysterical and we've had to take her outside. Whether it's James, this builder, his spirit, is at unrest, manifesting all these different scenarios for people. I don't know, but th this is one of the one of the creepier areas. Prior to the possession, I called out, I said, I know you're up here, can you can you do something for us? Almost a shadow come out from the doorway. It was almost a shadow which made me sort of take a step back. But it's walking through a doorway that's incomplete and the other side of that doorway is a drop all the way down to the floor. There's all these spirits here and they don't really know where they're coming from and because this was an unfinished mansion, it almost becomes the perfect home Yes. for any of the spirits in the area. Yes. Like what better place to live than this massive building mm -hmm. that it's you know like, owns. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's almost like if you've got the energy of the water creating a sort of a, a spiritual portal that yeah. can, can attract energies in, which would explain why it's such diverse activity. I nearly stopped investigating the paranormal. It, it frightened me that much. And yet you still don't believe? I, I believe in the paranormal. What I don't know is what it is. I think that's where I align, is his, his, his point of view. Yeah. It's like I've seen enough and I believe enough, but I can't explain what it is. And until yeah. I can explain what it is, it's hard for me to go, it's real. Would you, would you like the place in darkness for one year? Oh yes. No need. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> Pure darkness. Obviously the boss. Sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's always there. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh my god. Wait, can you, can you kill I... the lights real quick? Just to, to show what it really looks like without lights? What it's going to look like later when we're in here? Yup. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, his story is the first we've ever heard where he actually has a recollection of what happened to him. Because remember, Ernie from Waverly Hills mm -hmm. had no memory. Mm -hmm. It just happened, yep. and then he just, that was it. Yeah, he woke up. Oh, it's yep. cold about here. Yep. Wow. Are you leaving this unlocked for us tonight? I will leave this, yeah. Yeah, oh. you can Perfect. help yourself. Yeah, we will. Matt will absolutely help himself. Mm -hmm. A countless things have been seen uh, mainly a dog that you can see in that corridor had stones thrown and the room I'll take you to shortly which we call the vaulted room has a pillar in the centre of the room uh, there used to be an energy that people used to call elemental energy so mm -hmm. sort of you've, 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 energy that isn't from something that's lived it's more just energy that's built up as quite a dark oppressive thing that manifests into your own fears basically so years ago we had a group down there doing a vigil we had ambient light you could just about make out the the pillar because the room just suddenly went black and the person sat um, in, on the steps in that room vanished he said are you still there and you could hear the voice but the voice sounded very distant and then the energy shifted and then he was back in the room. Quick, uh, quick question, there's no trees outside that window, right? No trees outside that window? Yes. No, we're still... Corey and I not. just watched something go by the window. Something literally... Like, maybe it would have been maybe like six inches above the base of it. Oh, that window there? Yeah, yeah as if some way... No, this is the staircase. That's the staircase. That's the stairs we just walked down. Yeah. There's no way. We just watched, we, it looked like, you know, like leaves blowing by or something like that. Uh, is there a no It was, it would have been, put your hand out, like waist level, higher, about right there. Just walk, just, it went right to left, like as if it was going up. You saw it, right? Yes, I saw it. I thought that was a window. That'd be on the side. 
To be honest, that would be like a larger dog. Whoa, about that high, it would be like a German Shepherd or a Hound. You will get audible phenomena down here as well. And again, with those steps, um, several times as groups have left the, first thing the cellar, left. you will hear footsteps following you up. That is behind you. I have to see this. It was it was literally this. This is this is what I saw. Yeah, right. That'd be Very a dog. Bro, that's the first thing I've seen since we've been on this trip that I was like 100% could not have been anything else. Might have seen a dog. First time. I don't know. It was, was. I don't know what it was. I didn't say anything because I, it was so it was so obviously there that I was like, no. If we come down to this end room on the left, this this is the vaulted room. So this is the this is a room that's had the the darker energy in it. Again, this this is another room where where you can experience more physical activity. I've already mentioned the dog. Uh, the dog's been seen while people have been in here calling out, uh, walking past that door. The only name that's been picked up down here um, that I've seen get a reaction is Michael. We don't know who Michael is. That, that's uh, one of the names you can try using. This is our scrying mirror. It's always been in the building as long as I can remember. I don't know how old it is. Do you know what? Uh, I don't know whether to tell you what you need to be looking out for when you scry in front of this mirror. Yeah, maybe not tell us. Yeah. I won't tell you just yet until the end of the night. This mirror showed me that there could be something more going on because what different groups were picking up was the same deformity. That's all I'll say. Mm. Mm. And it's the same side of the body and it ties in with something that we believe happened during spring park time. Is there anything that needs to be like said or a specific way you're supposed to look at it? What, what I normally do is just grab a chair, there's one just there, mm -hmm. stick it in front. Turn the lights off, put a low light on the floor. They're experiencing the change, but even the people stood around the back. Really? That me. I sat here. Yeah. And you all saw the same thing happening on me, which wouldn't be likely, because we all have completely different angles, which means it wasn't the mirror, it was the scrying element. I just saw a light. No, you didn't. Square. Yeah, I saw right. a light over there twice. Top earlier. right, yeah. Earlier. This was top left where I saw it. it was like Camera lights on. It was like a flashlight going like this. Yeah. It. We are alone in this building. There's no one else here. There's no one else in the building. We normally have an on-site caretaker. He's not in residence tonight. We are alone in the building. Somebody's usually here by themselves. Yeah, he looks after <laughs> the building. But tonight we are alone. And bear in mind, we've driven down a track. We are a mile from the nearest road. We are literally in the middle of nowhere. Dude, this is going to be a crazy Every, investigation. Yeah. Most places we go to on this trip so far, I'm like, this is beautiful, it's a little bit creepy. And then like, by the time we even start the investigation, I'm like, okay, something's going on here. <laughs> this is where I spend most of my time when I have guest panel on the group's day. I will sit in this room and just wait while they're out in the building. So going back to the little boy, I was sat in this room one night, had my laptop, headphones on, watching a film. At the corner of my eye, I saw somebody walk in. I turned round and there was a Victorian boy stood in the middle of the room staring at me. Brown suit, brown shorts, and I could even see the, the red colouring of his tubes. That clear. As clear as you're there. For seconds. And then vanished. That's insane. That's the best ghost sighting. I've experienced five that I consider to be ghost sightings that I don't believe is my imagination. That is the clearest one I've had. This room leads on through into what would have been the library. This is so dark. Oh wow. Wow. I love fireplaces in my heart. Come right here. Come here. Oh, it's freezing. It's, it's a it's breeze. Yeah. Look, put your hand here. Put your hand here. Oh, oh my yeah. God. There's something cold there. What, what are we doing right here? What's that? You feel that? You feel it, yeah. It's a full breeze. Closed. But it's nowhere else. It's moving. It's moving. Closed. Moving, moving, moving. It's a little strange. There's no broken windows or anything in here? That was really nice. How tall was the little boy that you saw? 
Oh no my way. goodness. It's oh my god. Oh, it's literally, it's literally right here. It's you coming down this. on the top of my hand. I've never felt I've never felt a cold spot like this before. You go in a room, you're like, it's just a little bit cold, but this yeah. is like active wind, but no motion. The medium that's joining us, I purposely said, don't join us on the tour. Mm. I wonder, he's going to draw oh, whatever he sees that's here tonight. If he draws a little boy in here. Well, thank you for all your knowledge and stories. Appreciate it. You're yeah. welcome. I hope you have a good night in the building. Yeah. yeah. Let me know what. So to recap, we have James on the top floor. Mm -hmm. We have Michael on the bottom floor. Mm -hmm. We have a man in the prep room who does not speak. There's potentially the woman in the window. Elizabeth. There's a little boy that has been seen all throughout the building, but we now know he's about that height, the mm -hmm. brown cap, brown suit, mm -hmm. shine shoes. And, and then, the dog. And then with the, the, dog the dog that we've now encountered. That's just who we know of, yeah. mm -hmm. let alone who we don't. Mm -hmm. Well, now we get to meet up with a medium who's going to do something that I have never seen before in person. He has the ability to see and then draw exactly what he sees. I'm very excited for that. Yeah. No one say anything. Not yeah. what we've seen tonight. Nothing. Okay. Pop that You hear the whistling? You. You, hear whistling? you heard the whistling? You guys hear whistling? Evan, do you hear that? I didn't hear whistling. I thought it was one of you guys. Evan, did you pick that up? Yeah. You heard that, right? Yeah, who was like, whistling? Shh. You know who would whistle? A little boy. A that was whistling. Okay, let's carry on. Okay. That's crazy. All right, so before we start the investigation, Andy's also gonna come over here in a minute, who is the medium. And I just wanna give a breakdown of all the tools that we have here. This is a massive place, but I feel like we have a little bit of everything. The one thing that we noticed is we don't have the thermal anymore. So <laughs> I think we left it at the poltergeist house. It's the one tool that we talked about needing. It's not in our kit. If we had it, trust me, we'd be using it. Don't know where it is. Never, ever left something behind. That's what I'm saying. Everybody remembers packing it. Mm -hmm. And instead of the thermal, if you really want to pick up a small boy, if it catches it on the SLS, oh. that's something else. I thought you were gonna make an Xbox Connect joke. If you wanna, if you wanna pick up a small boy, <laughs> you need an <laughs> Xbox, Xbox Connect. Andy, the medium is here, and I believe he will be drawing something. And I believe he should be. Somewhere around in here. the darkness. Andy? Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, you were right. He emerges from the shadows. Right on you. How's it going? Hey. All good. All good. Nice to meet you, Elton. Andy. Pleasure. Thanks for joining us tonight. And you've been here a few times before, right? Five or six times, yeah, out of the years, yeah. 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 How, how do you feel about this place? I like it. I think it's got a good energy about it, apart from downstairs. Mm -hmm. Which to me is very negative. Okay. I've walked past the entrance to the cellar a few times already this evening. I'm not happy about going down there. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Because that's where we've both had an experience already, visual and yeah. Uh, audio. Yeah, there's something down there that's not human, pretty much like um, a dog. Ah. Mm. A dog. Think about that. I bet it takes the form of a dog. That's exactly what I said. I said, what you're describing to me is like a large German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. The kitchen area, I don't know if you've been in the kitchen mm -hmm. area yet. For me, um, there was a lady in there um, predating this building. I think it would go back to the building that was here prior to this. Got a name, Anna. Anna. Uh, I've drawn her. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she's badly burnt on her left leg. She looks as though she's been beaten, and she kind of drags the leg when she walks. Is the cellar somewhere you want to venture to tonight, or would you rather stay away? No, no, I'm quite happy to be there. Happy. <laughs> That's optimistic. <laughs> Should we start down and work our way up? You want to? And I'll take the uh, final floor later tonight. By yourself? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Well, should, we, should we turn all the, EV, uh, the EMFs on, the rentals on? So when we're down in the cellar, we might get to hear it. Wow, that was... What was that? Anyone have a camera on? I did. Oh, you really? just had a camera on? What was that? I lost an alarm. Some of our thrown in there. And you hear it? I'm being careful because this is where all the saws are. See if anything's moving. Any of the ropes. 
See if you can find something on the ground. On the something just fell. Or it's thrown. Remember he said things are thrown in here? This is... What was that? Sounds like a rock hitting the floor. Yeah. Or... Could have been this. Could have been someone. Oh wait, I thought, I thought that was... Was it not? So oh, those were... Keep in mind. Oh. Keep in mind, look above. It could have been thrown from any of those balconies that are wide open. Oh, that's true. What? Dude, that was a clear yeah. as day talk. I'm amazed. Every time Evan turns off his camera, something happens. But Ryan, Ryan had his on. Um, I'm going to move the chair at the door so I can set up this. Remember the first story we heard? 
He said it was a little reason behind him, huh? No, whenever we first got here about in the kitchen, oh, yeah. how there was the man that but, people saw. But a tall man. And he will not communicate at all. Where that stands in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're not too far away from there. Well, I can see that she only turns to the energy at the moment. She kind of sits here. Across, looks going up. And then she runs up this way. I smell a cigarette. Really? Yeah. I swear. Did you not? It, it was a whiff too. It's not there anymore. There's no way. You heard that right? No, it looked like a head poked in and poked out. Right now? Yeah. What did you hear? Oh, I only saw something. What did you see? Right. What did you see? Right. No, what did you hear? I heard. I thought you were standing right there. What did you see? What did you see? says what they see until the end of the night. Until the end of the night? Mm-hmm. So we all do it for a couple minutes. Everyone keeps to themselves what they see. If they need to write it down, they write it down. And at the end of the night, we can all see if we saw the same thing. What 
definitely got that. I saw the audio speak. How was it? That was a dog. It was like a bowl or something. What was it? What was it? It sounded like a dog. Say what? What the f? Oh, I want to hear that right now. What the f was that? Dog. Dog. That wasn't out there. No, that was I, down here. It was down the hall. What was that? That was like a bowl falling or something. No, that was like a bark. I heard the dog, yeah. It was like a bark. Oh. Look to see if a plate dropped. Well, I'm just I'm just saying there's literally plates here. What did you hear? No, no, there's no one here. I'm gonna check. It's like a. It went. That's what I heard. Yeah, it was like a dog. Yeah, it was like a You know what's weird? Oh, I can't say it. What? Can I say what I was seeing in the mirror? Can I say I saw something move in front of you. Can I say it? Can we say it? All right. Everyone, one at a time, go to Adam and see what you can say what you saw. Okay. One at a time. Corey, go for it. No one else hear each other. Uh, you guys should step away then. For me, in the mirror, his face was like transforming into like a werewolf. I swear to God, that's what I saw. It looked like he was transforming into like a werewolf. And then it goes, Arr! Um, So I didn't see anything on Dan's face. And I was looking pretty hard. I kept having to fix my eyes because I wasn't blinking. But I was standing with Corey to my right. I saw like a, I thought he like took his hand out of his pocket and put it in front of him, but I was standing right next to him. He didn't make a single noise. He's wearing a loud ass jacket. But uh, yeah, I saw like something white go like by him that way. And then we heard loud noise. Okay, so when I was looking in the mirror, I could see my face starting to darken, but it looked like I had white face paint on almost around and then down my nose. My eyes started to become a lot darker and my skin looked older and it looked like I had a shade around my head. And then that was when I heard the roar and this almighty noise which shocked me back to reality. And my face just instantly went back to normal. And that's what I saw. I didn't see his face grow older. I saw his face get younger and then his eyes turned black. I've never seen this guy in here before. Almost the opposite of everything I've ever seen. I normally see like your face get older and decrepit. And instead it's like skin like cleared and tightened. And his eyes turned like bright black. So. Should we try it again? Yeah. Just one last one try. Try again. No matter what we hear, we'll see. No one moves until the time's up. Okay. Because who knows, had we not scattered, what would happen? Could something more have happened? Yeah? 
Yeah. Two minutes, just uh, Be quiet, don't move, no. Why'd you move? I heard somebody right next to me. I know, I know, that's the point. I know, I, I, I don't want to talk about it. Well, what just happened? Can I go outside? Pass that question. I'm gonna throw up. What happened? What's happening? I'm about to throw up right now, dog. So, both of his eyes went outwards and did like, you know, like a full like spin and it went pitch black. And then as soon as that crumbling noise or whatever happened, his entire face started waving from side to side. And then the entire mirror started waving like that. And I immediately had, you know, I saw that with my eyes. I, I could see myself, my, I was nodding myself. I don't know why. I thought you were looking at me from time to time. Never once. I, I never took my eyes off my own eyes. And I kept, for some reason, I was looking at myself. Uh, nodding. It's only because what I've just done in terms of healing for you, I flooded you with energy to take away the pain away. But a little bit of that residual energy stayed, so it just opened your third eye a little bit. It's, it's got a little clothes down there. Oh, okay, back to normal. Dude, I'm shaking really yeah. bad right now. Like my stomach is like going like that. Deep breaths. So that's why. Because you opened my third eye more by giving me that. Yeah, I did, I, there was no intention to it. No, 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 no. But, yeah. but Dude, yeah. his eyes spun sideways to the back and then it was just black it was all black and then his entire face started waving and then the entire mirror started waving and like shaking it felt like a dream I was like that was not real okay I didn't, I'm I didn't gonna freak put out my hand on your chest okay you alright with that? Uh -huh. I could see myself, my, I was nodding myself. I don't know why. I thought you were looking at me from time to time. Never once. I never, never took my eyes off my own eyes. And I kept, for some reason, I was looking at myself. Uh, nodding. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's interesting because I kept seeing your eyes go black and then kind of go back to normal. That was good. Cool. I kept focusing in and out. Yeah. I kept then refocusing on my face instead of letting my eyes just wander into the abyss. Check on Corey. Matt, do you want to give it a try? No. <laughs> My eyes kind of hurt actually. Size. 
stuff in and they can see this. Okay. Yeah, actually, it was bad. So, um, I'm like, it was bad, dude. Did you feel that? I feel a lot better, yeah. especially after what you just did right now. Okay. Mm. There's, there's nothing there with you, there's nothing attached. Your, all your shackles are clean, clear, everything's been removed, any negativity, and with hematite on your wrist. Anything that does, they just won't stop them coming near you, it's almost like an oil slick, they'll just, any energy they put on you will just slow it off. So it won't stick to your oil or anything like that. Okay, so, do you want more blast of the, uh, the bells? I would like that, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for that, but seriously. That no way. Feel good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, better? Um, yeah, 100%. That's crazy. I'm not shaking at all. That, <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. I literally pictured my guardian angel just wrapping his wings around me while you're doing that, and it was on that one that I could actually see his wings wrapping around me, and it went away immediately. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want. Don't worry about it. Just stay here, we'll get all the gear. We'll head out. Okay. All right, let's get everything out. So, first, Matt said y'all heard footsteps. Mm -hmm. I did not hear footsteps. I heard, like, the building was collapsing for probably five to ten seconds. That I'm just explaining the noise at first. It was literally like it just sounded like a building crashing, okay? Before, you know, I started to hear that. We started to focus on you and I'm staring at you and uh, both of your eyes went opposite ways and spun to the back of your head and then your eyes were pitch black and then as soon as that happened I heard the building collapsing noise and your head kinda started to go to the side and your entire face was going like this okay yeah. and then the entire mirror started going like this and then I was just close to either passing out or something, immediately had to throw up, and then, yeah. And that was it. So, uh, wow. I thought you, like, felt someone grab you or saw something. I didn't. No. Oh. Like, I saw that with my eyes. And I literally, all I heard, I did not hear footsteps. I thought we all heard the same thing. It was. It just sounded like a building collapsing. I heard somebody step to you. Like, yeah, one, two. I never heard that. That's I, why I moved. I would bet an $8 amount that when we play back the audio, that is precisely what we're gonna hear of one, two. There is no doubt in my mind that we heard those You heard it loud, steps. right? Yes. There is no doubt in my mind I heard two footsteps, and I thought they stepped right in between the two of you. And that's what I... Yeah, that's why I moved. I was like, there's somebody next to us. I, I have to move. I don't know how I'm gonna 
be able to go to the next location. Yeah, because the next place, next, next place is fucking dark, man. I really don't. I've been scared of the next place this whole trip. I mean, the, the living room is a safe haven. That's where he had it blessed, and uh, we should be fine now. The, for the next spot? Yeah. Do you want to bring Andy? I would love that. Andy. <laughs> Can I ask him? Okay.